is the YouTube of my Facebook Live that's about to start in just a moment. And I will not be aiming questions here. This is, um, I'm doing it live just so that I have it up on my YouTube channel with ease for people to see in the future. I'm going to start in about a minute on actual Facebook if you want to join me there if you happen to be here live. I will not, though, be answering questions on YouTube. I won't even be reading them. So if you have them, you can certainly email me at inthemiddleofmrd at gmail.com. And you can subscribe to me there. Uh, just put subscribe in the subject line. I'll get you on so you know about future ca casts that I do here. So I'm going to aim all my energy this way. And hopefully some of the information will be, still be helpful to you in the future if you find this. Okay, so here we go on Facebook Live. Hi everybody, it's Mr. D at In the Middle with Mr. D1 at blogspot.com and this is Facebook Live Summer So You're Teaching Middle School Chorus next year. Um, I'm going to kind of hang out here for a minute and let some people join us and then we'll uh, uh, give you some of the specials in my TPT store. And, uh, uh oh, I need to start that one more time. I think I was recording the wrong way. Uh, my plan though is to answer some questions here for you. Um, and uh, hopefully that's going to work. I'm looking at the, uh, the way that I've got the camera, I'm not sure. So um, let me just restart this. Oh, here we go. Yay. Okay. I'm hoping Angela's here. So yay. All right. Good. All right. So before I begin, uh, they say that teachers are off for summer, but I say that we're in recovery. <laughs> so yay. But we're, we're um, getting our energy back. We're ready. We're going to get ready for next year. So I'm going to get to the content in just a moment, but I want to let you guys know, so you can let others know, the specials that are in my TPT store. I always do them with Facebook Lives. They're lasting until 10 o'clock tonight. So let me just check it out real quick, and then I'll re-announce these later. But uh, free in my store right now is um, the first month of middle school chorus. I'm going to post a little, um, they can just go and grab it until 10 o'clock tonight, post a link to this at the end. Also free in my store is lesson one. Uh, I know, right, Deanne? Hello. Or how's your recovery going? Um, lesson one is free in my store until 10 p.m. And then the mega bundle of Psych S cubed is 50% off until 10 p.m. And level one of S cubed is 50% off until 10 p.m. And I already posted in my store earlier those links on a different, if you just like scroll up and down, you'll find what I, uh, so you can go direct link right into it. Okay, it looks like some people are joining in here. So I will start with some questions to kind of get the conversation rolling. So I want to know if anybody in the room is uh, going to be teaching uh, for the first time in middle school chorus next year. So if you could just press like so I have a feel for um, who is going to be teaching for the first time. Okay, I'm not seeing any likes and so maybe we have experienced people here right now. Um, are there any people who've just graduated college um, or are about to maybe in the next year or so? Press like if you've got that. I'm not seeing those likes so maybe. All right, so how many of you have taught at least five years? Press like if you could do that. All right. Okay. Um, any veterans in the room? People who've taught a long time? I know I see Angela a lot. Yes. Okay. We've got a lot of veterans. Y'all are here to, to talk. All right. You can share and help. That'll be great. Um, okay. So um, I am going to, this, this conversation is really going to come from you. Um, and I want you to kind of, you know, just put questions here that I can answer for you in the best way that I know how. Um, to uh, tell you what I would do. It doesn't mean it's the right way, but it, it certainly, hello, I see these likes. Thank you, thank you. It looks like maybe, um, maybe, maybe there's an internet uh, delay or something. Um, I want you to, if you could right now post, if you're in the room, what was your greatest success this year? Like something that you really felt good about with your kids so that we can kind of all, like, I know for me, I'll, I'll start with uh, my own uh best success I felt like this year was uh, a song we did called World Will Know. Okay. Um, oh, I see. World Will Know, I, I rearranged it to match the Broadway version for Newsies and the kids absolutely loved it. And I loved it too and it was fun. So I, I couldn't find the real sheet music so I bought the, what, I, what I could find and then I just rearranged it. Listen, I'm not even good at that but I did my best. So Tanya, you're going to be switching from six years in fourth grade to middle school course, right? So Tanya, I think that, uh, not to uh, alarm you at all, but I think that's the most tricky transition is going from elementary to middle. Um, and so I'm glad that you're here today and I hope that we can help you. What are your biggest concerns, Tanya, since you've jumped in? 
All right, Nipoma, California, greatest success. We sang in Swahili. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, did you do Sia Hamba, Brenda? Because um, that was, um, that's one that I've done before. Veteran high school teacher told I would also be teaching 6-8 as well as my high school job. Oh, yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can see more of what you wrote here. Um, it's not letting me right now. Um, so you might have to write a little more in a separate post, Stephanie. I'm not sure that the view that I have is not letting me see the rest of what you wrote. Um, so high school to middle, uh, I'm sure is, is challenging too. You know what they need the most, I think from elementary, wherever you're coming from, what they need the most is so much structure. So when you, um, I, I, I've, re I've done some videos in my YouTube, they're on my YouTube uh, channel. Um, the first 10 minutes of the first day of middle school, make sure you check that out. And also, I didn't mention this when I was talking about the deals in my TPT store that are going to last till 10 o'clock tonight, but there is a free classroom management video in, on my blog right now that I did for IMES last week. You need to go watch that. Um, okay, you did Bora Mesha. Great, Brenda. I don't know that one. I'll have to check it out. All right, developing beginning sightseeing and performing in Africa by Toto is, okay, that was a great success. Good, Angela. Yeah, that's a lot. Um, so, um, I want to know, uh, now that you've listed some of your successes, please keep them coming. Just make sure it's clear in your comments what you're talking about, because this is going to help other teachers, right? Like me, I'm going to go look at some of these things that you have listed here so I can learn something new. Um, welcome Leon Savage. Hello. So, all right. So what were, what are your biggest, uh, challenges in your middle school classroom. Just like type some of those up and let's talk. Um, uh, okay, Stephanie, you're not too excited. I, I totally understand, um, you know, middle school is not for everybody and a lot of people are scared of it. You know, when I tell people I teach middle school, they're like, why? <laughs> On purpose? That's sort of what they do. Um, so what are some of your biggest, what were, are some of your biggest challenges in your classroom? Um, that you've faced in the last year or so. Um, so I'll start with mine. Okay, second, well, let me see. Second year middle school got most of the sixth grade class involved in chorus, including my boys. That's awesome. Yay. All right, keeping students from talking while singing. Yes, yes, yes. 90 minute class length talking. Yes, honestly, just getting this in the swing of things. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right. So let's talk about talking. Um, okay, so here is uh, my approach to talking, like when they talk when I'm when I am uh, teaching. Um, I, first of all, you know, I use my hand signs to get them quiet. I go, do, and they sing it, and they have to sign with me, just like we do in uh, Follow the Hand of uh, S Cubed. And that they can't talk when they do that, right? So they immediately listen. And if I've created the right atmosphere in my room, that they want to cooperate with me, they will stop and listen and do it. And that's something that's really important for you, uh, and, and you know, they're with you, they're actually signing and singing, they're listening. Um, so it co goes hand in hand with your sight singing, that's why I like it. I also do things like rhythm clapping and they echo, but I find that the singing does it best. They get quieter when they're singing. Um, so that's one thing that I do. Um, and as soon as I feel the talking occur, I do that. Now, when I'm working in sections and I hear, I, I know that I'm gonna probably have a chance of hearing talking if I'm working with basses, then I tell the sopranos and the altos to uh, audiate their part while they uh, while I'm working with basses. If they don't know their part, um, I give them something to look at, something to do that uh, that they should be doing while I'm doing it. And I try not to uh, work so slowly that you know it's too much to ask of them, which I think is really important with your pacing. Um, Talking uh, when they're if they sometimes if I don't feel like you know I want to do that I will just stop and look at them right that is what and I just wait I, I just stop teaching <laughs> and just that silence probably made someone look at the phone or look at whatever device you're using the silence really helps and they you don't even have to yell or scream you just do it uh, and they will get quiet with you but again it goes back to creating the atmosphere in the room where they want to cooperate with you, which is why you need to go to my blog, look at the classroom management. I just posted, I think, last week. It's free. You can go look at the entire presentation. Um, and I tell you a lot of the things that help you set up the right situation so that talking is less, right? But we know they're going to talk, right? I mean, they're middle school kids. 
uh, heck, you know, adults talking rehearsal. But we have to have some strategies in place. We have to keep our pacing quick. We have to be very clear where we're headed. Like you have, like sometimes it helps when you put your uh, lesson plan on the board and not like your lesson plan that you submit to your principal, but you're, you're like uh, at 920, we're doing this. At 925, we're doing this. At 928, we're doing, you know, like that way they know what's coming. And uh, that kind of structure, they need it. I mean, I know that you get this question every day. What are we doing today? Right? So they always want to know what's next in this class. So let me just go um, back and look at some of these questions. Um, all right. So some of you, have, uh, I see here that Jackie wrote recruitment. Recruitment is your concern in the older grades, especially. Okay. So I'll address this a little bit. Um, I think the best recruiter is a solid program. And I know that's hard, but like doing quality work, right? Doing, even if you have a small group, uh, but you do something that the kids are enjoying because you're enjoying and you've created a good product. When they, are, when they feel like they're a part of something good, even when it's small, if you're starting in a small situation, then, then that attracts more people. Um, recruitment uh, also is, uh, what I do is I, I participate, I make sure I form relationships with my elementary teachers. Um, and I uh, do my best. We have this annual thing that we do where all the elementaries and middle and high school in our, in our theater come together and we sing for each other. And I think it's really important to participate in something like that if you have the opportunity because those kids see it. Uh, the best, and then they want to be a part of it if you've done something interesting, you know. Recruitment, uh, picking music that really clicks with them. And I, I, I'm not talking about pop music because I don't really do pop music. I do Broadway. This is my thing that I love. But, and I do, you know, of course, traditional choral music or festivals. But like, even when you're doing things like you guide what type of music they do um, and you need to do certain things for festivals and things like that, but you have to make sure that they like it and you, you know, maybe give them a buy-in and let them help you choose. Maybe you bring in five pieces when you only have to choose two and then you have some choices. Um, word of mouth is really the best recruiter. When kids walk out of your room and they've had a, an awesome experience in your class on a given day and then they talk about it with their peers, that helps more kids come. Um, the daily experience is the best recruiter. They've got, I mean, you can't knock it out of the park every day. Nobody can do that. But you, you know, you have to have days periodically where you're just, they're just, it's rolling and things are going great and you're exciting the kids who are in the room and then they talk. Um, and then also uh, with boys, I pick music. I remember the first year I was at Henderson where I teach now, um, I, I didn't have a big program. I had 80 kids and now I have over 300, but like at the beginning it was not a big program. I didn't have enough kids in each class. And so I did My Girl, My Girl, My Girl, that song. And I get put little dance moves with it, you know, because I have a choreography background and whatever, and it's real simple for even if you don't. And they adored it. And, the, you know, that those experiences with songs like that, that you like, that they like as well, then you, you get some recruitment going. All right, let me see. Um, all right, so she's, uh, this is Margie. I'm in my third year of a church choir that due to schedule must be combined six to 12 and I've loved using your warm-ups. Okay. It's, I can't see the rest of it, Margie. I'm so sorry. I'll have to come back to the ones that are too long because for some reason it's not letting me see the really long ones and don't be afraid to go in and, and do multiple comments. I see. Um, okay. So let me see. Another concern is not doing lessons too babyish for Tanya. Yep. Okay. So, um, yeah, you definitely, it takes a while, Tanya, to find the right way to treat your middle schoolers, if, if you're, especially if you're coming from elementary. Um, they appreciate a wicked sense of humor. Um, they, I, I personally uh, can be a little bit, of course, appropriately inappropriate, I would say is the word, and they love it. And when you, like, when whatever the new cultural thing is with, uh, then like just go on Google and say, you know, what's happening in pop music with middle schoolers or what, you know, this summer or just be specific. Like, what is the new thing? Like a couple of years ago, it was the dab, right? And when you do the dab for those kids, like it's so, they first of all are embarrassed for you, which is great and exactly what you want. Um, and, and then, you know, they also laugh with you and they, you know, and they, it becomes a, you create an atmosphere where they know you're trying to stay interested in what they're doing in their lives. And I think that goes a long way. 
All right, so let me see. Jackie, you have only 30 minutes a week, including them walking to me from classroom, choosing what to prioritize. Okay. Um, yeah, Jackie, I think when you have 30 minutes a week, um, you need to uh, do a little bit of reading. Uh, maybe exposure to solfege would be a better way because you're not going to have a little time to probably sight sing or sight read so much. Um, but doing solfege games like Forbidden Pattern or something which is free in my store until 10 o'clock tonight, so go get it. It's less than one of S cubed. Um, and, you know, just things that uh, bond you with the kids in a very short, quick amount of time. And then uh, you're going to have to do some literature and teaching vocal exercises of some kind to help them learn to sing and breathe. But it's just going to be in very short segments. You're, you're going to have to lower the amount of pressure you put on yourself. You cannot create miracles in 30 minutes a week. It's just not possible. Um, you do your best with what you've got. And then what I do is uh, when I've not had a schedule I wanted is I've fought to get what I want. You know, you've got to have a vision in your head. And then you got to not be afraid to go to the administrators for January or February of every year and, and say, this is what I would like. This is what I think would serve my students. This is what would serve my program. Uh, this is, can you help me make this happen? And then if they, if they don't like your idea, maybe they have a better idea. They appreciate your passion. They want to help you achieve the things that you want to achieve. You just have to go in with that kind of approach. We don't go in with the approach of, oh my God, I... Um, I never get what I want, or the music program is never a priority, or, you know, you, that's not going to get you anywhere. So you really have to go in with, this is my vision, this is what I want to do that I think is best for the students. Uh, I know you have a lot of other considerations, you have a lot of things that I don't even understand that have to go into the scheduling, but can we move in this direction? Can you help me get closer to this than we currently are, right? Uh, 30 minutes is not enough. All right, Jackie, to learn, yeah, singing basics and concert pieces. Yeah, your concerts, Jackie, need to be short. You know, like, don't be afraid. I do mini concerts um, at the beginning of the year because I can't get so much music in them and I want to do sight singing. Um, are middle schoolers old enough to do a choir tour? Um, okay, Melody, so I know a lot of people who do it. I'm going to tell you that I would never personally travel overnight with middle school students. <laughs> That's just me. But I know a lot of people do it and kids love it. And if you uh, want to do it and it's something you want to organize, you can do it and, and be successful. I have done day trips like to Six Flags for competitions with my students. They adore it. Like it's the awesome day. 99% of them love it. But um, I took, I think, I, did, I didn't take a top group, which I think was my mistake. I did it for years actually. Um, I took everybody. Everybody I could, you know, who could afford to go or who really wanted to go and we could afford to pay. They love it. It was a great recruitment tool. Um, they got great feedback from the judges that helped me grow as a, as a teacher. But somebody, every year, a child would either steal something and I would have to go to security. Or a child would, uh, you know, get in an argument with a child and, and I would get a phone call to go to security or something. And it would be some random kid in the park. And, and then the last time I went, and I would still deal with that, like it happened or whatever. But the last year I went, it rained nonstop, and we lost our day at the park. And I just decided that I'd rather spend my energy in other ways, but that's just me. Like, my energy goes towards our, our uh, annual fundraiser Broadway review, and I spend so much energy on that. But I adore it. It's my passion, so I go, right? Um, let me see. Jeff. All right. Thanks. You guys respond to each other. Please help each other. This is great. Thanks, for Jeff, for doing that. Uh, CJ, you're welcome for doing I, I learn in these sessions, so I go back and read the comments. Yeah, all right, so going from elementary to middle, I already discussed earlier. You might want to take a look at that. Um, okay, I think, all right, so CJ, is it wise to uh, program pop and Broadway music for the first concert? You know what? I, I could see that that could work. Um, you know, for my first concert, I definitely believe you have to do stuff that, that cranks their tractor, excuse me, I'm from the South, um, things that really rev them up um, because then they're excited, you know, for what's next. Um, I don't do pop and Broadway in the first nine weeks because I do Broadway at the end of the school year and we're doing, they're auditioning with Broadway stuff, so they're getting that exposure through their auditions, uh, some of them, but then I do, I do, a lot of you know this, I do a song called Dweller of the Cave and another song called Thunder Lizard, it's from Music K8. And um, that is one of the best resources I know of uh, for years I've used it. Now, the, I, those two songs are really old. 
but the kids uh, adore those two songs because they, I do a fog machine, they do it in the dark, they have flashlights they bring to school, I do flashlight choreography, fog machines, strobe lights, and it's not that difficult to put together and learn in the weeks that we have in the beginning of the school year. So I usually do that one and then uh, maybe two other songs in a mini concert for that first nine weeks. Um, and I invite the parents to school and some of them come and some of them don't during the school day to lower the pressure. They're in their familiar environment, you know, uh, in my room where the acoustics are the same and they can have a success. And they feel like, yay, we did something. You know, I do that about the eighth or ninth week of school. So I, you could do a Broadway or Pops thing uh, at the beginning. Just don't overburden yourself with repertoire right at the beginning of the year um, because it just is so much pressure and so much stress. And you need to be teaching literacy, you know, sight singing, whether you're using S cubed or some other program, you need to be doing things like that. You need to be building vocal technique, um, helping them learn to produce tone. Um, so I, yeah, engaging them would be good. So let me check some of these other, how to teach sixth graders when you haven't had a solid fifth grade background. Well, Stephanie, I, um, the teachers that teach the students that come to me have changed over the years, right? Um, and so I've had a variety of preparedness walking into my sixth grade uh, classroom. Um, Sometimes, and I, I have six or seven, depending on this recent school years, feeders that feed to me, and I, I, I get about a hundred sixth graders, so they come from all varied backgrounds. When, when they get to sixth grade, I assume they've had very little experience, and that's why I do S cubed with them right from day one. And um, it's like uh, that starts to build the foundation. And then I uh, assume they don't read at all so that I teach them those basics in S cubed. I uh, build their vocal skills, you know, the, uh, teach them to listen through S cubed. Um, it's like laying the foundation. So I, I think S cubed solves a lot of the vocal things and uh, stuff. Now you have to do a lot more, you know, in your vocal warmups and, 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 uh, than you do in S cubed. But, you definitely uh, should just assume that they're coming to you with almost nothing because I don't know many elementary schools that meet their students more than once per week or twice per week for a very short amount of time. That's not enough, and it's not the elementary teacher's fault. It's just how it is. So uh, let me answer some here. What extras do you offer for your kiddos? Tour, pizza? Okay. Um, I do, when they win the S-cubed game, in the first nine weeks or the second nine weeks, I usually do a pizza party for the winning class to stoke competition among the classes. Um, and it's just very easy. Like I just order pizza, it's in the class when they arrive, right? It's not something big, I don't wanna overwhelm myself. So, um, and I use chorus funds. We, we do a fundraiser every spring with our musical and so I have chorus funds available to do that. You can also do chorus dues and have the students pay up front in the beginning of the year and so you have a pool of money to do things like this from. Um, I do Starburst candy like um, day, almost daily. Like at the end of class, I do Starburst questions to review some of the highlights of that day. So I take, I, I, uh, I ask the question, the kid answers correctly, I throw the Starburst. Um, I do a lot of public praise without reward. Uh, remember to praise in public and a correct in private, right? Especially with middle school, whenever possible. It's not always 100% possible, but you do your best to maintain the dignity that way. But praise in public is without any candy at all is something that goes so far with these kids. So they, their eyes change, the kids around them change, they look at them and then they, they fix their posture. If I say, God, you know, Christy, that's incredible posture you got, good job. You know, those types of things. Um, I also, you know, if it's a, like a, a Friday before the holidays and I'm struggling to like really keep them engaged, I throw an actual Starburst at a child randomly, you know, for doing the right thing, you know. So those sorts of things are my main ways of rewarding um, my students. So if you have other ideas, please let her know. All right, Tanya, are there any videos you could suggest that help me with becoming stronger in choreography? Um, you know, Andy Beck has done some of that stuff uh, over the years, there are, if any of you know anybody who's, John Jacobson is probably the top choreographer uh, for uh, choirs in the world. Um, so check out his stuff. Um, ironically, side story, uh, when I was 
17 years old, I think John Jacobson was maybe 22, and he was doing his very first workshop with high schools during that school year, and he was working with someone named, named Fritz Mountford, and he was incredible, even at 22 years old. Like, the, the experiences, that, I get goosebumps thinking about the experiences that he gave us as high school children, and so now to, conce to see his continued success, if you don't know him, please get to know him. He's really awesome, and he also has a, a book, uh, I think not, like a magazine, Music Express, which I've not used. If you know about it, let us know. I've, I've been a Music K8 person, not because I don't like Music Express, just because it has worked for me. Um, so do I recommend that students sing scales using scale degree numbers or solfege? Solfege, solfege, solfege. Okay, seriously. Uh, I know people have success with numbers. Um, but when you're going one, two, three, four, one, there's the end, right? You can't go, I mean, you have to teach them to go one, which isn't, you know, it's just so hard. You've got a W, W's are hard, N's, you know, tend to close out. But when you're doing solfege, you're, you're teaching vowels and correct tone with vowels. And that's what singing really ultimately has, it's the, fo it's the foundation, it's really key. So, um, you know, mostly you need to be doing solfege, but certainly other exciting warm-ups to change it up. You know, warm-up books have a lot of great ideas. There's so many out there. Um, and I'm always digging around in my, my Facebook pages for warm-up ideas from others as well. How many songs do you do per group for concert? Okay, what's many? Tanya. All right. Um, first concert is three for everybody, except my boys. It's one, uh, two. They do two, I think. Actually, they do three. But one of them they kind of knew from the previous year, all right? Uh, second concert is a, is a bigger one. It's a holiday concert. My eighth graders do uh, two by themselves. And then they, we do some re repetition of songs. So um, they know a lot of the songs. So when I say the number that I'm about to say, don't freak out. It's like, I think the total number they do is either five or six. But they already know the third, fourth, and fifth, it, and sixth one if there is one. They've already learned it uh, previous years. Seventh graders, uh, girls do one by themselves, and they have about four others. Boys do one by themselves and about four others, again, that they learned in sixth grade. And then there, you know, there's not that much pressure on them to learn more. Um, sometimes seventh graders might do two new ones to, you know, brand new ones to them. Um, and then the sixth graders at that concert have a lot to learn. There's like five, so it's a lot. But I, I teach them like just the soprano part for some of the songs that are like the, the songs we repeat each year. So that they're just, I can work on tone quality and not worry about parts and that kind of thing. That's a, something you should do, especially when you're when you're putting all your kids together. Like I have um, probably four, four to six songs when everybody's together, all 300 kids. So I just always give this a, a soprano part to the sixth graders. That way they're not dealing with harmonies yet. Then our um, festival, we do, everybody sings two. Um, and so that's third nine weeks, but we're also working on the musical at that time. So for a musical, they probably have six or seven songs, but sometimes they're just learning one part. Like my boys will learn baritone, my uh, seventh graders will learn alto. So I don't pressure them to learn a lot of different parts. I mean, third nine weeks, I definitely do because they're at festival and they have to really get com comfortable with harmony in sixth and in seventh grade. Easy harmony in sixth grade, very easy. But um, just don't over push them, right? Make uh, create opportunities for success. Like when you choose a piece that is too hard, it's really frustrating for you. It's really frustrating for them, and that is not a great recruitment tool. Um, all right. So if I oh I considered writing a book, <laughs> I appreciate it, Tanya. You know the thing. Um, S cubed is really my book, and then my blog is sort of my book. So I, I guess I, I'm doing it, but I don't know. I did actually. I created. I started writing a book in 2009 of S cubed, but it just didn't work, and I, the format that it's in now is better. But maybe one day. I don't know. Uh, okay, Laurie. All right. Yeah. Thanks for replying to each other, you guys. I see choir only three times a week. Orchestra doublers. Yeah. Mm. Um, and my recommendation for you would be to lower the number of songs that you do in concert um, so that you can make sure you're also uh, covering literacy because the more literate they are, then by the time they get to eighth grade, the more you can do with them, even though you're never going to be, you cannot cram 10 pounds of stuff into a five pound bag. It's just not possible. 
I'm so great. And so stop putting yourself through that pressure, right? Just don't do it. Um, do concerts. They need it. Do teach literacy. They need it. And just know that you have this amount of time. And as I said earlier, fight for what you want. Have a vision for your program. Um, go to your principal, as I already stated earlier. If you didn't hear that, please listen to that section of this, uh, this um, YouTube and Facebook Live. Um, on sub days, Lori, uh, with middle schoolers, what do I do? I um, do a couple of things. Several things, actually. So here's what I do. I do music prodigy some days. So my kids are one-to-one -one Chromebooks. And music prodigy is a program I created some homework examples and assessment examples that complement each one of the examples in SQ. So I'll assign three to five uh, examples that they have to do. And I can see in music prodigy when they did the example, how long they spent on the example, and it assigns them a grade. So when they're one-to-one, -one, that's a great thing to do. Like you have a school that's one-to-one, -one, go at it. Um, I also invite a guest artist, theater person, who I work with from a musical sometimes. Um, and I, of course, have to pay her. That's, when, that's why you need either course dues or you need a, uh, some kind of fundraiser that you do. Like I do my Broadway musical review as my fundraiser each year. Um, so you have some money to pay for these things. Um, so the person uh, that comes in is somebody that works with us. So she'll do theater games and she'll do practice auditions and things like that. And then um, sometimes I'll have them do like a choir, as an assessment of choirs. They listen and assess what they've heard. Um, I'll do it through the Google Classroom. Sometimes I will, if I have a really strong sub, I'll put parts, uh, like the alto part and the soprano part, I'll record them and put them into the Google Classroom. And if you're not familiar with Google Classroom, get familiar with it. It has changed everything for me in the last two years. But you can, like, the kids can go with their Google Chromebooks or whatever, or their one-to-one -one devices, and they can, like, play their part and listen to it and review it and review it and review it. And then the next day you come in, and they've already been exposed to it. And they, it, so I, that's a really cool tool, right? So those are some of the things. Um, okay, so Angela, you're moving from K-12 elementary. Uh, I will be using, excuse me, my fourth and fifth graders. I think that's great, Angela. Like, I, uh, I think it works well with fourth and fifth graders. Um, just be really delicate with them on the game. Make sure they can win because, you know, sometimes they're, they're not quite as able to focus at that age as the older kids are. Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So, Angela, I think just follow the program as it is and just, you know, trust your instincts about how to um, keep them engaged so that they can be successful. It's critical that you make a, this uh, success happen on the game. Uh, that you, uh, I think, extra critical that they are acknowledged for everything positive they're doing and how, how much they're achieving and how much they're reading. Um, okay, so, um, yes, Angela, thanks for sharing if I were a fish warm up. And you guys, any links you want to share down here, please share them. Um, can you speak about your tradition pieces? You say some of the concert rep that they've known for previous years. Okay, yeah, so Jeff, here's what I got. Um, holiday concert. Every year... We do Greg Gilpin's Silent Night. It's epic. Um, I never thought I could do Silent Night in public school, but when, um, when it, this is such a beautiful arrangement, I just decided that I would give it a shot and that people love it. Now, here's, here's what um, you need to do if you're going to do a song like that in public school. Like, you need to make sure that, uh, especially if your school is quite diverse as mine is, that you're doing things from different traditions. Like, another song that we do, and by the way, Silent Night is with hand signs. Um, it is beautiful. They do like sign language. Um, we do Light the Candles All Around the World by uh, uh, Music K8. And that one is very open. Like the message is very much like everybody can celebrate how they want to. And it's beautiful. They light actual candles. The kids adore be, being trusted with candles. Another one we do every year at a holiday is Light Up the Tree by Hank Beeb. Um, and that uh, is uh, also in the dark. We put red, green, blue, and white uh, covers on the flashlights, little paper, crepe paper or whatever, and they click them red, green, blue, white. It's super uh, awesome. They love it. Every year they do that. Um, and those are the three that are the main ones we do every single year as a group. And then there's, uh, we do one other song as a group, uh, our opener, like a, sort of a Broadway style opener. And um, that is different every year, but that's something we have to learn together. And I divide them up. Sixth grade does soprano, seventh grade does alto, uh, all the seventh grade boys do baritone. Eighth grade can learn it in three parts because they're able to do it. 
Um, also, on my blog, I have a, uh, a blog post called Some Song Choices. Just Google it, and you can see a lot of the things that I really like, and I add a little bit every year. Um, okay, uh, six and eighth grade boys together. Sixth grade, no experience. Seventh eighth grade training. How do you make this work? Oh, God. Stephanie, first of all, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's really rough. Um, sixth grade boys mostly don't have a voice, haven't changed their voices. Um, what would I do? I think what I would do, uh, some seventh grade voices I haven't even begun to change, right? Um, I would take the boys who are treble and I would let them sing up the octave maybe so that they can, you know, you guys can be, and you can use that as an opportunity to teach about octaves and listening for octaves and what they sound like and what they should sound like when they're great. Um, and then I would, uh, do very, very simple literature, probably, probably TB. I would look at stuff by Briley uh, Press, I think it's called. Is that the one? There's a, I, uh, my brain's not working, but there's um, a lot of great literature. I believe it's in Briley for boys. If that's correct, please let me know. Or if you know other um, stuff that serves boys, look up Google uh, Cambiata, Cambiata. Um, choices for boys, and then you'll probably get a link to things like that. But I would probably let them sing up, up the octave on the tenor part, maybe, and uh, teach octaves. And um, if festival, I'm not sure I would even take them. Um, and if I did, I would just lower my expectations because a lot of the judges have no clue about what we really deal with in the classroom. And maybe they've forgotten, I don't know. But like some of the, th I, I wouldn't want to put them in a situation where they get a low score because you didn't do TB the way you were supposed to do TB and you made them sing up the octave. You know how they, there's this whole thing with that culture. Um, I love going to festivals, adjudications, but I try to play by their rules so that my kids can be successful or have the best chance for being successful. Um, okay, Kira, let me see. Um, what are your favorite pieces for winter concert? I just covered that, so I think we're good. And that's in my blog post too, some song choices. Um, in conjunction with part rehearsing, I'm having my students complete. Okay, yeah, self-reflections are great. Um, okay, especially, all right, so Tanya on Music K8. Um, when you buy the subscription, you have the song for life and you can print it out as much as you want to print it out as many times as you want to. It is, Music K8 is one of the best deals that's out there. Like, um, it is so, if you have a low budget, then you put your resources right there and you're going to get stuff that you can use for your whole career with one single year long purchase. And it, it is awesome. And they come up with new stuff all the time and the stuff and the kids adore most of the stuff from music. K8. like th this, uh, Therese, J Teresa Jennings knows what cranks them up. So do it. Um, Briley publishing. Thank you for that, Stephanie. I thought I was right. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Jeff, this whole thing with the uh, festival, there is a culture, but if you're going to do it, you just have to, you just have to play by the rules. Right. Um, and you have to know the rules enough because your, your number one focus is creating an atmosphere where your students can be successful, where they can learn and grow and you can learn and grow because the comments that you receive from them, uh, the judges are very helpful. Their, uh, their hearts are in the right spot. But um, a lot of the judges have just forgotten. I, I think uh, some of them are retired, um, or maybe they have never really taught in a real public school. And in, in my, I know a lot of you don't teach in public school, but my whole focus for all this Facebook Live and YouTube and creating S Cubed and all the stuff that I do is to help teachers in classrooms like the one I uh, have been in. And all my career, I've been in a public school classroom. I've always had a very diverse population of students. I've had to figure out how to reach beginners. I've never had a Mozart in my room. I'm still waiting for that after 27 years. So yeah, um, this is uh, something that you will face as well if you do this, okay? So, um, all right, so in Texas, you do UIL. You need to come to Texas and present. I would love to do that, Stephanie. I, I, I would love to come to Texas. I, um, I have... Uh, been in touch with a lot of teachers from Texas. There are a lot of people who use SQ. I know you guys do um, the program. You you do um, audiation in the sight singing room. So I've had to help some people kind of work through that because we don't do audiation in SQ. Although it's I think it's a wonderful tool. And while I'm on that subject, I, I think it's a wonderful tool for more advanced students. Not that you can't use it some with the younger ones, but true beginners need to actually feel 
and they need to actually do. And that's why I have all of this. Hand, I, the hand signs are critical. Pulsing is critical for rhythm. Lifting and lowering your hand. Um, chaos practice as we do in lesson six of S Fugue. It's all critical. They got to actually sing out loud on their own so they can have a chance to get better. It's like, how do you expect a child to speak a language if they only are thinking it in their head and it's just supposed to come out right, you know, and they've never had the chance to go through actually speaking it, making mistakes, learning self-assessment, learning self-correction. Um, you know, uh, I teach that in SQ, like you have to self-assess, you have to self-correct. You heard that you were off there. Did you sing it wrong over and over or did you find tools that I've taught you to use to fix that problem? That's something that is very important. All right. Um, yeah, all right, you guys. Thank you. Give me to Texas, Angela. Talk to some people. Have them send me some emails. Uh, if you guys have any more questions, please shoot them out. But it looks like some I've kind of caught up with the questions here. If you have anything else, a lot of times people ask about boys and when they drone down low. But uh, I don't want to just jump on that if that's not what you need. If there's anything else that you need, please let me know. And I just want to I'll stay here for a while longer. I want to ask you uh, or just remind you that in my store, um, the first month of Middle School Chorus is for free. I'm going to post this at the bottom here so you can hit the links. It's called the first month of Middle School Chorus. It'll be great until 10 o'clock. Just go get it. Lesson one, the game Forbidden Pattern is free until 10 tonight. And then the two most popular bundles of SQ, um, Mega Bundle and Level 1, are 50% off until 10 p.m. tonight. So please go grab them and let your peers know as well. If you think of anything else, you shoot it here. I'm just going to hang here for a few more minutes and, and let anything else roll in. Tanya asked a lot of questions today. I hope I helped you, Tanya, um, and I hope I'm helping some of the others. I appreciate you guys. All of your support online has uh, been good, and it helps me too. And I can't wait to read your comments so I can find some new music like that Swahili piece. Okay, what to do with bo those boys who dream down my Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> um, find their voice, right? So when they come in and they're like, oh, way down there, and they've never experienced what it feels like to actually sing in tune, maybe they've sat in your classroom week after week after week and you weren't sure what to do, so you just let them drone down low, then their musculature gets used to singing down there and, and, and their brain does not make the connection of what it feels like to sing in tune. And until you help them make that connection, it's very difficult to get them to expand their range, right? We, so that's number one. Number two is you, then you need to find where their droning is happening. Like, you know, where, what pitches are they using? What is that three note range where you can go, soul me soul, which I can't even go that low, right? Or whatever, and use soul me soul, because it's so simple. And you find where they are, and then you play the pitches, and then they're going to match pitch for the first time, right, with their new voices. And you're going to be like, yay, there it is. That's what it feels like to match that pitch. Now let's see if we can go up by a half step uh, or down by a half step, depending on what you think is best. You know, use your musicianship and your brains from your training in college. And move up or down by a half step. And, if, and echo it for them first. Like play the piano as, and, and echo it at the same time because in the beginning they need that. The piano isn't always enough. If they hear you, if, if you are a woman and you can't echo it, then you just have to use the piano, right? Um, or if you're a tenor and you can't go that lower. And then you, you get them to experience what it feels like. And once they feel it, then they start, their brain awakens in some way that I, I'm not a scientist, so I don't know, but it starts to make them uh, their whole physical being change when they're singing so that they start, you, you know, you've already taught breathing stuff. You've already done things, but they're not using it because they're just sitting back there droning. So you have to get them to experience it and then you start to expand it and then do things like, oh, all those stretching exercises that we do in class to help. And they won't go that wide, their range at all, right? But you work with them one-on-one -on -one a few times until you start to expand their range. They stretch their voices a little bit. Uh, teach them next about falsetto. So, and then find their falsetto and teach them that that is an option. And let them sing falsetto when it's too high. It's okay. Because then when they're singing falsetto and they are matching pitch correctly, once again, their brains are making a connection that makes them search for the matched pitch 
Whereas before you did any of this, they were just sitting back there droning, right? So these are the things that uh, I do with my kids to get them. And then some kids, you know, it's really hard, you know, that when they have that really rough voice change. But almost all the time, I can get them to match pitch, you know, at least some of the time. And the notes that they can't really hit, maybe they can't figure out, they will on their own just drop out for that period, that little place they can't do it. And they're showing me that they understand I'm out of tune here. I don't have the capability to do that. Those are all good things, you know, while their voices are settling and they're figuring it all out. Um, okay, I, I appreciate, Lori. Thank you, thank you. Uh, low basses are acquired gender bass. Yep, having a problem singing up in falsetto. Yeah, yeah, for sure they can. They can't, they can't, they have falsetto. You just have to teach them and it's okay to use it. You have to help them experience it. Some of my favorite and most efficient methods for individual sight reading, sight singing assessments. All right, so I have Music Prodigy, which I love um, because it is immediate feedback. Um, I, I created uh, homework examples and assessment examples for uh, Music Prodigy that correlate with S cubed. So they're intended to be used together. But when they sing, they immediately sing um, the note turns uh, red if they're wrong, yellow if they're close, and green if they're correct. It's immediate. Um, and that could be pitch that's correct or rhythm that is correct. So uh, that's my favorite, and the signs are great. Now, there are glitches. It's a very hard technology, I'm not gonna lie. You know, I mean, sometimes the app crashes and there are problems, but, and you need a really good wireless connection when you use it, um, but it is the best, okay? And then another one that I'm learning about right now and that I'm um, happy to sort of announce here is that I'm gonna be working with Music First. They're also gonna have those, um, homework examples and they're going to be uh, selling s cubed in their um in their network through this season coming up and theirs is good too i don't know as much about it but it's um something you should check out um and s cubed homework examples will be there in assessment examples those are my two favorite sight singing individual uh, assessments i can listen to the kids individually in music prodigy um, I can, uh, you know, assess what's happening with their voices because I don't get to listen to my kids individually hardly ever because I have classes as large as 84. So I, I don't do sing down the row or come sing, you know, your sight singing example for me, right? Um, the free stuff, Sarah, yes, free stuff in my store. All right, so I'm going to put a link up in a minute. And I've already put one link in my Facebook page today. So uh, it has all this in it. And, and then when this is over, when I close this down, I'm gonna put this link into the bottom of these comments. Anyway, in my Teachers Pay Teacher store, just put music in the middle of Mr. D, Teachers Pay Teachers, if, if you don't wanna wait for the link. And, um, and when you get to my store, you'll see my little face there and just uh, look up the, uh, the first month of middle school chorus and go download that until 10 o'clock tonight. Lesson one, download that. And then if you decide you want to jump on the s cubed sight singing train, they're 50% off until 10 o'clock tonight. Um, and they're all in my store. Just go in there and grab them. All right. Um, what are, all right, let me see. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right, you guys, I appreciate you. And um, we've been up for about 45 minutes, so I'm going to start to close it down. I'll do another one later this summer. If you want to be on my email list so you don't miss this stuff. Send me an email, write uh, in the middle of Mr. D at gmail.com, write subscribe in the subject line. And meanwhile, tonight until 10, take advantage of those free things that I mentioned the first month of middle school chorus, lesson one of S cubed, go grab them. It'll, it'll be good. You can use stuff later and um, then grab 50% uh, off for the mega bundle, which is the complete program. Everything, everything's in there. Um, and then S cubed level one is 50% uh, off as well. Go grab it. Thank you all. Have a great summer. And remember, as I said earlier, you are not off for the summer. You are in recovery. Enjoy it. I'm gonna. All right, take care and I'll be in touch.